It's really nice to be back in Indonesia. I've been away for almost three years and it's nice. It's a great honor and a privilege to start off the brown bag series and hopefully we're getting back to normal face-to-face -face contact. Uh, I heard about uh, the International Islamic University because of Pat Jamhari and others talking about it. It's very, it's really encouraging to see it in person, not least because even though this is just the initial stage of development, it's already extremely impressive. Uh, it, it, the physical infrastructure speaks to the aspiration that you have uh, Islamic architecture that's not Middle Eastern architecture, it's not Indonesian architecture, but it's, it's high quality, it's, um, it's world's best, and it's open and inviting. Uh, and it gives me a sense of optimism about this project because it's long been the case that uh, Indonesian Islam has uh, remained a kind of secret, uh, partly because of barriers of language, uh, and people have not appreciated the level of intellectual activity and uh, uh, the uh, creativity and uh, the depth of understanding that, that has been developed in Indonesia. Indonesia has long been thought of as being on the periphery of the Muslim world. Geographically, there's some truth in that, but intellectually, it's at the center of the Islamic world. But in order to communicate that, it needs a project like the International Islamic University. I have great optimism that this will go a long way uh, this is of course of benefit to Indonesia, but it's beyond just Indonesia by itself. Uh, the rest of the world, uh, the entire planet has a lot to learn from Indonesia, including in religious tolerance and understanding. So I think it's, it's wonderful that in 2022 we begin to see this come into fruition. Uh, my topic today for the Brownberg Lecture Theories uh, relates to a research project I'm doing, which relates to work I've done in Indonesia for three decades. Um, Certainly in the last two decades I've worked on, on uh, understanding violent extremism and working with civil society to counter violent extremism. But before that I've long been researching uh, civil society and progressive Islamic thought. And this research project which will carry on for the next three years in Indonesia, the Philippines, Mozambique and Kenya is about understanding what we can do and should do, what we should be aware of um, when it comes to doing community development and, and humanitarian interventions in areas that are dealing with problems of hate and violence and conflict and how we can better integrate what we do so that it brings a, a more universal good. It's new research so there's not general agreement on these things but I think what is very clear and what's been proven to me already is that um, civil society groups, activists inspired by religious values, particularly by Islam, uh, play a really vital role in countering hate and, and extremism and uh, this project is an attempt to document that and understand it better.